Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. In just two weeks, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect a new president or to renew the term of the current president. The political atmosphere in Nigeria is heating up. And we here at Sahara TV are giving you the best we can coverage wall to wall on what's going on. Now, this is the Skype call segment. It's a segment when we give you the chance to join us and we want to hear your voice on some of the issues we've been discussing. And we've had a lot of interviews today. But before we get to the Skype callers, I have a special guest here with me in the studio. I have with me Reverend, Pastor, Professor, Journalist, Lolu Akonde. Lolu, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, um, Rudolf. Now, now, Lolu, you are just, uh, just came back from Nigeria. And I want to know, what is your impression on the political situation in the country? What did you see? Well, thank you so much, uh, Rudolf. Uh, I, I think that uh, there's a very clear uh, excitement uh, in Nigeria uh, about this election. And uh, I, I, I saw quite a lot of, uh, uh, you know, hopeful manifestations, you know, among the people regarding what is possible well, with this election. That there is a momentum that is gathering, number one, you know, uh, that the people are becoming more aware of their, uh, their power, you know, with their vote. I think there is an increased awareness on the part of the Nigerian people uh, of what they can uh, make to happen. And I think, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, the, the candidacy of uh, General Muhammad Buhari with uh, Professor Yemyoshi Banjo has uh, ignited uh, a passion in, in quite a big part of the country about the possibility of a change. Now, it's very important that you mention that because an American friend was asking me, what, what changed? Because you, you had Buhari uh, running against Jonathan just four years ago. What, what, what changed in the last four years? I, I think uh, a big part of what has happened is uh, that uh, President Goodall Jonathan has frittered away the, 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 the very impressive goodwill that he had, you know, coming in in 2011. I think a lot of people gave him uh, uh, the opportunity. They were excited about his candidacy. He was able to define himself uh, as a, a candidate of change then. And uh, four years after, you know, uh, the whole thing seems to have been an, a, a bad investment. You remember that the president himself, President Jonathan himself, said then that if you can't fix the problem of power in four years, if you can't uh, fix the problem of insecurity in four years, using his own words, he said that he's useless. Don't vote for me again. And so I, I think Nigerians have actually captured uh, that. And uh, uh, so what has, the, the, the idea is that this president, we put a lot of hope in him, uh, but he has not delivered. Mm. And so people think that, all right, you know, maybe it's time to have uh, another possible try. Now, let me say that uh, very soon we are going to be joined by Shedrach Fubara, who is a supporter of President Goodlord Jonathan. We will, we will get him to join us and tell us what he thinks about uh, what uh, Lolo is saying here. Uh, but, but let's go to something that is in the news currently, um, which is that today the African Union announced that they will be sending troops to Nigeria, uh, 7,500 soldiers to help deal with the Boko Haram uh, issue in northern Nigeria. How did that come about? Uh, who did Nigeria request for troops? Okay, now, uh, essentially the, the federal government has, uh, has been objecting to the idea of international troops, you know, uh, getting involved in the, in the Boko Haram uh, insurgency. Uh, but what you have the African Union trying to do right now is what is called the Multinational Joint Tax Force, which in, in essence, uh, Nigeria, Chad, and I believe Cameroon, uh, have been trying to do on a very, uh, on, on, a, on a less significant number. And the, the, the African Union is now trying to beef up 
that, uh, uh, that force up to 7,500. So uh, I will imagine that Nigerian troops are still going to be in majority. Uh, we don't have all the details. Possibly still going to be in the majority, but now it's going to be a, a truly multinational force uh, because the problem itself has become uh, an international problem. So are these troops going to come into Nigeria? Is that, or are they going to be at the border? Well, you know, don't forget that the, the, the current one they have now, the current multinational joint tax force is actually headquartered in Baga. Uh, which is a Nigerian territory, and uh, uh, so so Chadian troops come in, you know. So these troops will, will be operating ar ar around the borders, but certainly, you know, uh, there will be occasions for them. I imagine uh, on Nigerian borders, on Nigerian side of the border. So so let's look at the campaigns. It's been going on for a while. Um, this week there was an issue about debate whether to have it or not to have it, and the Buhari team pulled out from a debate. What is your take on how the both, the both teams have been campaigning and what's the issue with this debate? Well, you know, uh, I, I think it was the right call uh, for the Buhari Oshibajo uh, campaign organization not to be part of this debate because uh, you, you need to understand the people who are actually driving the organization of the debate. Uh, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, NTA, uh, AIT, which is largely uh, uh, pro PDP. NTA that is controlled by, gov by, by PDP government, it would be unwise uh, for the Buhari or Shibaju ticket to have gone in, into that debate. Now, if, 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 uh, if, if we are very serious about the idea of, 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 a campaign, of a debate, we should start from the civil society and the independent media. Uh, you know, people like Sahara Reporters, uh, like The Guardian, you know, like Channels TV, and of course also include uh, the government part of it, but form a truly independent body, not a body that is run by people who used to be NTA and B, uh, B -B -O -N, uh bosses. Uh, we cannot put, you know, our trust in their independence. So, so I think it was a right call, and I still believe that an opportunity still exists, even, even at this time, to have a, an, a genuine and an independent uh, uh, a debate uh, to which both parties should, uh, should, should, be, should, be, should be included. Mm. Now, in, in your other part of your career is that you're a pastor. And in this, in this campaign, we've seen a lot of involvement by religious leaders, uh, especially the uh, Reverend Baka in uh, Anambra, Enugu State, and also um, Bishop David Oedebo, which was recent. Now, what do you think about the role of pastors in this election? Does that mean uh, good for the country or bad? What are the dangers? What are the advantages? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, altogether the involvement of uh, the partisan involvement of, of, of pastors using their pulpit uh, in a partisan way is it, it's, it's not ideal. Uh, you know, because if you have a church, you know, I, I, I imagine that you can, you can have people from both parties. I, I'm a pastor uh, of a growing church in, in Long Island. I'm not going to go to the pulpit and tell them that I'm supporting a particular candidate. No, I, can use, I cannot use that pulpit for that. Now, uh, but I'm entitled uh, as, a, as a free and independent citizen to have my own preferences. Uh, so to the extent that pastors know how to balance out, I mean, look at the general overseer of the redeemed uh, Christian Church of God, you know, Daddy Gio. Uh, he has not used and he will not use the pulpit because he says that there are members from PDP and members of APC and other parties in my congregation. So I'm not going to descend to that level. I'm going to stay on top of it. Now, but does that mean that he doesn't have his own preferences? No. But he wouldn't use the pulpit. Uh, to advance such a cause. Now, if he's going to use the pulpit, he uses it in, in a way that is uh, uh, equal. Like, for instance, he said, look, I have registered. This is my PVC. Everybody should go and register. That is how pastors can, uh, can help to empower the people to determine who they vote for. I don't think we should use, as pastors, we shouldn't use the pulpit uh, to campaign, whether directly or indirectly. For, for political candidates. But that doesn't mean that we can't have our own preferences. Yeah, so, so one of the questions they ask is simply that the churches, is, they, are, they are not regulated, nobody controls what people are doing in their churches. Uh, and, and if this is not controlled by anybody, how, how are the churches controlling themselves? For instance, so someone like David Oedepo, who is going all out saying things that people are questioning whether pastors should be saying, 
do you think that other pastors or other churches in the country, there's a responsibility to say to him that this is not right, that this might lead to something else that we may not want? Well, uh, I, I know that, uh, you know, we, we, uh, as a journalist, I, I would prefer a, a transparent uh, kind of working out of these things. But as a pastor, I know that it is more effective when uh, it is done behind the scene. I am convinced that uh, there are uh, more influential and senior uh, uh, religious leaders in Nigeria who can talk to any erring pastor to, to, you know, to, to, to be very careful. Uh, and uh, I suspect that that probably is, is happening right now. All right. So we are going to go uh, and speak to Shedrach Fubara, who is a public affairs analyst. He's in Canada. He's a supporter. He's a supporter of uh, President Jonathan. Um, I'm hearing that he's not ready, but um, we, we, that's the next person we bring in so that he will react to some of the things we're discussing okay. whenever he's ready. Right. But since he's not yet ready, let's, let's continue. Um, Saludo. Uh, Saludo, um, the former central bank governor, yes. wrote an article this week that basically caused a lot of uh, opera in many circles. He analyzed the economic policies of President Goodlord Jonathan, and at the end, he came to the conclusion that Jonathan, as far as the economy is concerned, failed. Um, I know you're not an economist, uh, but you followed the reaction that followed that. One of mm -hmm. them is the reaction from the Minister for the Economy, uh, the, the Minister for Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, economy yeah. whatever that means. Um, she said that, um, that Soludo essentially is bitter, that he's somebody that failed, to, he wants to be relevant, and that he is the worst central bank governor in the history of Nigeria. What do you make of Soludo's article and the reaction by Ngozi Konjewala? I, I think Dr. Charles Soludo's uh, article is, uh, is, is a patriotic intervention uh, in, the, in the political debate in, in, in the country. Uh, Soludo does have the right to, uh, to hear his opinion. He is uh, uh, an expert in this matter. He's an economist. He was uh, the chief economic advisor to the president and later became the central bank governor. His opinion on these matters are always, will always be, uh, be valuable. Uh, now, uh, when you find that people are trying to attack the person and not the message, that often, often indicates uh, the weakness of their, of their defense. You know, uh, I think it was unfortunate that you have the finance minister, uh, Sister Ngozi, trying to uh, diminish the, the, the personal credentials of Charles Soludo simply because uh, she couldn't agree with some of the bitter truths that Soludo had to offer. Uh, and I'm happy that uh, Sister Obi Ezekwisili has actually made that point publicly that you, know, you don't re re respond in an abusive way. Let us have an open and decent uh, debate about the issues. Uh, look, Nigeria is, is, is going to start to pay about over 25% of its revenues again uh, on debts. When uh, Sister Ngozi came as finance minister, one of the things that she did was to pay off you know, some of this debt. And why she is still finance minister, she's now going to be a uh, uh, minister when the country is again paying such a huge amount of its revenue on debt. That is just one indication of, uh, of how the standards have fallen. And, some of, and that's one of the reasons why uh, Soludo's opinion is, is, is very well, uh, uh, is, is well timed. Mm. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will talk to Shedrach Fubara and our Skype callers who have been waiting patiently to join this conversation with Lolo Akonde. So stay tuned. <laughs> 